So up to now, we've dealt with all the inputs that are less than 1, greater than 10, and that are non-integers. We've also dealt with the fact that if they enter text into here, then it's going to trigger an error. An error has occurred. But maybe we'd like to somehow differentiate between the other errors. We want to let the user know that they're entering a string when they shouldn't be entering a string. And we want to differentiate that from the other errors that are occurring. Just to remind you, the only errors that are occurring now are if we put in a string, if you do that, it just identifies an, a random error, just a generic error has occurred. We want to let the user know that they entered a string and that that doesn't work. So the next thing we're going to do is after we get g, the guess, we're going to check to make sure that it's a numeric value. So it's a number. If it is, then we're going to move along into the rest of the input validation process that we've set up. If it's not numeric, then we're going to display a message saying what you entered was non-numeric. Please try again. And then it loops back up to the do loop. In order for this to work, we have to redim g as a variant. We want it to accept strings so that we can identify that they have entered a string. Now what we're going to do is after we obtain g in the input box, we need to take all of this and put it inside uh, an if statement, a two-way if statement, which is this g g numeric on the flow chart. So we have if is numeric, that's how we can determine if g is numeric. If that's the case, then we move on with the rest of the input validation that we already set up. Otherwise, we have an else statement for if that is numeric is false. We say your guess must be a number. So that's letting them know that they have to enter a number. And then we move along just as we did previously. Going to step through this. And then if we enter something like hi, which is a string, it's not numeric. So we bump down into the else and we display your guess must be a number. Please try again. And it loops back up. And it still works if I do seven, then that is a numeric. And it also satisfies all three of those conditions. So we exit the do and we continue on with the game. Ooh, and I happen to guess the right number. So at this point, the only problem that we have is when we bring up the input box, all three of these situations, if you close the input box, if you cancel the input box, and if you just press OK without typing anything into the input box, all three of those yield the same result. So for example, if I press cancel, we look down here in the locals window, it obtains G as an empty string. So there's nothing in it. So let's deal with this. So now we're going to sort of add in one more thing. If it's not numeric, then we're going to check to see if G is empty. If it's empty quotations, we'll tell them that you can't leave a blank. And if it's not empty quotations, that means they entered a string. So we're going to differentiate between those two. So now we've differentiated. If it's not a number, then we're checking to see if it's just empty. If it's empty, we're going to let them know that they didn't enter anything. If it isn't empty space, then we're going to just tell them that they entered a non-number. In either case, we go back and we loop around and obtain G again. By the way, I just noticed this. This single loop up here really should be two loops like this. The one on the top should be for the return from the right side of the flowchart. The one on the bottom should be the return from the left side. We've converted this is numeric two way if then into a multi alternative. Now I have an else if g equals empty quotations, then we let them know that they didn't enter anything. Otherwise, if it's not numeric and it's not empty, then it's we message box your guess must be a number. Now the final issue is perhaps the most advanced. Now we're going to modify it such that it'll handle closing and canceling. And in that case, we just want to exit out of the sub altogether. We have one last modification to the flowchart. After we get G, we're going to check to see if it's false. If it's false, we're going to exit the sub altogether. So if G is not false, then we're going to move on just like we did. So this is the final flowchart. Now let's implement this last little modification. The reason I put this G equals false is because there's an input box function which is shown here, but there's also an input box method. So if I type application.inputbox, it is the input box method. And we can do a couple more things with the input box method. At the end of the input box, there are optional arguments. And you notice when I start typing that in, it tells us the optional arguments. So for now, let's just ignore all the other arguments. The important thing is the last argument, which we're going to put a 3. 
A three means it can accommodate strings and numbers. And the important thing about using the application input box method is it's been designed such that if the user cancels or closes out, the return value to whatever's on the left side of the equality is a false. So let me show you. If we run through this, you also notice that the input box looks a little different from the input box function. If I run this, I press F8, if I cancel, then you look down here in the locals window, the application.input box method has returned false to the value of G. And again, we have to have G as a variant. Also, I can run this and I can just close that button here. And the same thing happens, the return value for G is false. That's why on the flowchart here, I put if G equals false, then we're just going to prematurely exit the sub. If G is not false, we're going to continue on. So I've added a single line here. If G equals false, then exit sub. If we don't exit the sub, then we continue. Okay, finally, just to clean everything up, I've put in a button here and associate it with our guessing game. And let's just go through. Let me close the editor. I've closed the editor so it's all nice and neat. And the editor shouldn't pop up. We've protected against all of the different errors. So let's run this guessing game. I'm thinking of number. And let's just do all the input validation. String, your guess must be a number. Try again. Now if we just submit a blank, it's going to say you didn't enter anything. Try again. If I do cancel, then it just shuts down. If I do close, it just shuts down also. So see how so far it hasn't brought up the editor or any sort of debug box. Now let's check to for the negative numbers. So it says the guess must not be less than 1. We do something that's greater than 10. It tells us that, and I think that's it. I've tried to protect against all of the possible uh, variations in input so we don't end up getting that editor to pop up. Thanks for watching.